Okay, so we've been talking about being fit, being useful, being ready for the master. Why? Because we're prepared for the fight. We are fit for the fight. What fight? The fight of faith. But remember, we can't lose because whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. So this fight of faith is one of just hanging on, holding on to what is rightfully ours. Amen? I want to give you a couple examples of people or, or examples in the Bible of folks that weren't ready, weren't fit, weren't useful for the master. Look in Luke chapter 9 verse 59 through 60. And when you look there, God, Jesus calls them just like it said in, you know, our, our um, uh, um, scripture for the week comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Hang on, I'm getting there. Where it says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called, and have co confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Um, you were called. Well, here in Luke chapter 9, here's a young man that was called by Jesus personally, face to face. He called him. And uh, he said, Lord, I will follow you, but first... But first, let me go and bid them farewell who are at my house. Wait a minute, but first, no, 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 the master called you. Are you useful? Are you fit? Are you ready? No. In, in uh, verse, uh, that's verse 61. In verse 60, another man said, no, first let me go bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. See, these two guys were not fit, were not ready, were not useful for the call. Uh, Look at Jesus loved him. That's why he called him. We're loved. We're called. Are you ready? Or are all the things of this world first on your list? Uh, I, I need to go in our area because a lot of farmers and ranchers are here. Um, uh, you know, we need to do this. Well, well first let me go set my irrigation. <laughs> let me go uh, feed my cattle. Let me go put the horses out. Now, are all those good things? Yeah, they are. But what happens if the master comes and calls and we have some lame excuse for doing what he's called us to do? We need to make sure we're ready, we're useful, we're able. We also look in Matthew chapter 25 when it talks about the five talents and, 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 and you know, the, the, the master's leaving so he gives one of his servants five talents, one, two, and one, one. And the, five, the guy with five talents goes out and guess what? He's useful, fit, and ready. And what does he do? He takes that five and turns it into ten. The guy who has the two talents, what does he do? He turns it into four. The guy with one talent goes, oh, no, I know that you are a tough man to work for. And so, therefore, I just took mine and put it in the bank. I saved it. I, I didn't want it. I, I, was a, I was fearful. I was afraid that you were going to do something. So the, the master comes back, and the first guy comes and says, well, I had five. I turned it into ten. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. The second guy said, well, I had two and turned it into four. Well done, my good and faithful servant. The third guy said, well, I know what kind of a guy you are, and I was fearful, so I just buried it. And he said, you're an evil, evil servant. In other words, he was acting out of fear. Listen, as you and I read this, do you, do you and I see him as a, a mean, horrible uh, master? No, we see him tell the first guy, hey, well done, my good and faithful servant. I've entrusted you with a little, I'll entrust you with a lot. See, it was the vision of the master by the third guy that was a, made him a fearful, made him operate out of fear rather than faith. He was not fit for the fight of faith. Then we take a look at Abraham, though, when we look at Romans chapter 4, verse 4, starting with verse 4, uh, and verse, well, anyway, you can look at chapter 4, and it talks about the faithfulness of Abraham, and that it was accounted unto him as righteousness, as righteousness. See, um, Abraham became the master of techniques. He, even though he was told when he was 70 years old or 75 years old, I'm going to make you the, the father of many nations, um, he never changed his faith in God. Now, 
yes, he made some mistakes there, but he still remained faithful to God. And it wasn't until he was 125 years. See, many of us, we look at the time element. And we say, well, God, I, I thought you promised me this. Oh, God, I've been praying about this. And we give up. And maybe sometimes we give up just as God's ready to release the very promise that he has towards us. See, all of God's promises are yes and amen. They're not maybe. But sometimes you may not receive it today. It may be tomorrow. And if you walk out on your faith, if you're not fit and ready for the and, and useful by the master, you may quit before it's time to receive the promise. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, it says, you're in need of endurance. And after you have suffered for a while, then you'll receive the promise. After. Are you fit? Are you ready? Are you useful for the master for every good work? I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.